take a role like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does it come to you? Did, it, did, it, did an agent hear that this character was out there and he said, that's for my guy? Or did the director, did Robert Town say, man, I have already, I know who I want to be, the coach. How did it happen? Josh Lieberman, who was my agent, read the script and said, I, th I don't know whether he was allowed to give it to me or not, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, he snuck it to me. And I read it and said, I desperately wish to play this role. He said, but they don't want you. I said, what can I do? How can I get to meet Robert Town? And uh, we finally wrangled a meeting with him. And uh, I went in and I talked to Bob about the script, about I ran through it this way and that way. Every, I felt I understood it with, with such a fluidity, I inhabited it. And uh, then he took me upstairs and showed me pictures of Bowerman and a film on Bowerman and some stuff on the Munich Olympics. And then he took me downstairs and showed me the door and I turned around and I looked at him and I said, do you want me to read it? And he said, I can't ask you to do that. I said, no, you don't have to ask me. Can I read it for you? Can, I, can we sit down and read it? Do you have time? He said, yeah, okay. So you so, turned around and came back in. So I turned around and came back in, sat in the living room, and uh, I read the script for him, with him. He read the other parts, I read Bonham. And it was a really good reading. It's a beautiful script, and it flowed like a piece of poetry. And uh, so I said, so what do you think? He said it was a terrific reading. It was so enlightening, and I suddenly see things that I wrote myself that are so clear and I said well he said but I don't think you're right for the part I said okay and he turned me down so I harassed him for <laughs> three months Josh and I together and plagued him and finally I, I, I think he cast me not so much because he wanted me but he, he just gave because up because you were so persistent yeah now what makes you so persistent in a sense like in, I mean was it because this character or just it was just, I, I, one, I wanted to play a role of honor, a role of purity. Uh, uh, I just wanted to do that work. I wanted to, I love to work. I am, I passionately love to work. I love to feel my hand fit into the glove of some other character. You know, I, I find a huge freedom. Time stops for me in that, you know, I'm not as crazy as I used to be, but I'm, I'm still a little crazy. And, uh, and that pleasure, and when I can smell that, it's like the taste of it, it's, you couldn't, I couldn't not do it. You know, it was like the taste of the guy in, uh, in A Time to Kill, I four scenes. You know, it was only about six scenes and four scenes of it yeah, didn't, an didn't attorney, end up, yeah. you know, on the screen. But Joel, after I did them, chased me around the world on a telephone saying, this is the best stuff I've ever seen. And then he cut it out of the picture because it was too long. But I chased that picture too. I chase things, I pursue things. It's a, it's a pleasure. It's a, a relationship of love and uh, you know, do it. Do you have to chase because there are not that many of them that turn you on? So when you see one, it's so rare that you go all out for it. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm just trying to think of how many, I feel as if I'm betraying the, the guys I have played that maybe I didn't pursue, um, sometimes that I had a casual affair with, not, I didn't, somebody said in the Los Angeles thing that I, that, uh, that I walk through pictures, I've never walked through a picture in my life, God, I was so offended today. Um, I mean, it was a very flattering review for this picture, but it was, you know, it was a two-edged sword. He said, oh, he's done, he's just walked through things and imbued, he's got talent imbued that he each one. Without. Well, he imbued each one with the same gesture. I thought, what? Gosh, look at my notebooks, guys. Um, anyway, but it, you know, <laughs> my, my, uh, Who's gotten the most out of you as a director? Who's taken you on the longest stretch? I, I really loved working with Christian Duguay. I did a film for him called The Assignment. And I, 
I loved that. But I loved what Robert was able to do with me here. I loved the relationship. It was, it was hard. Some of it was, was tough. But it was, uh, I keep using poor old Alberto Giacometti, but it was, you no, know, but it's in that, you know, it's in, in that direction, you know, of trying to pare things down to, not to be minimalist, but to, to get to an area where all that exists is the essence of truth, to be, you know, true wit is nature to advantage dressed, what oft was thought, but ne'er so well expressed, to be witty, to be, um, to not be general, to be specific. Um, you know, Fellini, uh, what can you say? Fellini. And uh, Bertolucci was, was very, very good with me. Richard Marquand, who uh, directed The Eye of the Needle, we succeeded more out of antipathy than sympathy, but, but, um, Heaton was able to understand the pursuit of, of, of elegance and, and someone who does not splurge anything of his emotions. He was able to understand in that film, The Eye of the Needle, the concept of, of freedom, of liberty, um, where, where when, when the fellow who is a, a German spy right. And a, and a killer and an killer and assassin. Uh, when he lands on that island, even though the sub is still out there in the fog, when he gets to that island and survives that storm, it's as if he's home. You know, it's somebody who's running from third to home and stops to wave at his mother because he thinks he's home, but he's tagged out before he gets to the plate. But in that moment, when all of those defenses fall apart, all of that self-constraint goes away, the first thing that happens to him is he falls in love. And that was what I wanted to get at, that, that instinct within ourselves to, for joy and for love. And he was able to, he was able to work together with yeah. me on that. Ken Follett, book. Yeah. yeah. Roll tape, this is another clip from Without Limits. Here it is. What else do you call laying back for two and a half miles and then stealing a race in the last 200 yards? Winning! Well, I don't want to do that. You don't want to win? I don't want to win unless I know I've done my best. And the only way I know to do that is to run out front and flat out till I have nothing left. That was shot at Bill Bowman's house. Bill Bowman's house, yeah. yeah. Over the McKenzie yeah, Road. Over the McKenzie Road. Yeah. 